Today, we turn Pokemon radioactive. Let's see how we get on. Hey guys, I'm Goodfy, and today we're gonna make Pokemon radioactive. So you're probably wondering why am I deciding to do this? Well, pretty much recently I've actually been getting back into actually playing like Fallout New Vegas, and I've also been getting back into playing the Pokemon games as well. And then it kind of occurred to me, well, we've kind of seen Pokemon in different regions, like the lower region, and then obviously in Sword and Shield. So why not some kind of apocalyptic region? So pretty much we are just going to dive right into it. And before we do that, make sure to hit the bell and hit the subscribe button to see more content like this so you don't miss it and pretty much if you want to see more content like this pretty much you know you know what i mean by now anyway like i said we'll jump right into it we're gonna pick pokemon number one and then the second one i might ask a friend to pick a pokemon for me and which one i'm going to do so without further ado let's get and jump into the first one so, our first Pokemon we are going to be doing is Weezing. So, as you guys know, Weezing is pretty much the Poison Gas Pokemon. So, how are we going to make him a little bit more radioactive? Well, so Weezing has pretty much been, well, he's been as his normal self, and then all of a sudden, kaboom, nuclear explosion has happened. Many years later, the Weezings of this region have pretty much mutated into radioactive gas Pokemon. So pretty much they tried to breathe and while breathing, unfortunately they mutated into something much more deadly than a poison gas. Literally radioactive gas. So pretty much radioactive ooze comes out of the top of their pores it emits from the side and not just that but he's also grown a s two heads what i also decided to do was i decided to make him his main body larger much larger it's got even bigger so he's twice the size well now he has two heads smaller ones on each side and it, i think this makes it much more very, very interesting. <laughs> so what I also decided to do was I also made his teeth even bigger. Because pretty much if you think about it, when you think about something also radioactive, they get bigger, they get, sometimes they get more monstrous, and sometimes they can look something like this a bit more. I also decided to not draw him any eyes. He literally is, when he's walking about, he's lighting up the entire area with just a green glow everywhere. Now this is a kind of Pokemon you would not want to run into at all. Because pretty much, it's probably, even if it doesn't attack you, just being around it is the heavily radioactive. And I could imagine if you did own one, you'd probably want to have a radioactive suit at all times. So, very, very deadly Pokemon now. <laughs> but you could imagine if it tried to explode, like the move explosion, it would be much more devastating. So, I fairly enjoyed doing this one. I had a first kind of concept, didn't really work out, but I think this one looks much better. I also replaced the logo at the very bottom with the nuclear radioactive warning. I think that makes it look a bit more, you know, it's a warning, because obviously you've got a skull and crossbones, that means poison, that means radioactive. So, without further ado, here is radioactive wheezing. And there you guys have it, we have done the first one, Weezing. And I think this one actually turned out pretty good. And it was a good little dabble, you know, little like test of waters. But now I've actually got, my friend has got back to me and he told me to do a certain Pokemon. He told me, I hope I'm saying this right, I think it's Gigantron, Gigantron. It's the electric spider. I'll even show it here. Sorry, I'm trying to pronounce <laughs> it, but he asked me to do that because he actually thinks that would be quite interesting to look. And I went, okay, 
let's see how I get on doing this one, shall we? This will be definitely intriguing. See how much more I can make it look a bit more mutated inside, I guess it would be. So, let's see how we do with this one. Alright, so we are on to the next Pokemon. So, I asked my friend what Pokemon would he want to do, and he said, Hey, why did I do Gigantron? And I went, Alright, let's do Gigantron. That would be an interesting one to do. So, I thought, okay, so we kind of know that most insects in our world would survive, unfortunately, which means if something like a nuclear apocalypse happened, the insects would thrive. Would they get smaller? No. They would get bigger. And probably a lot more terrifying. <laughs> I think that's kind of the whole emphasis of them being radioactive. But anyway, so what I decided to do was I gave Gargantuan more eyes. I gave him double the amount of eyes. What I also do is for each leg, the fur that was surrounding his body has, you know, it's gone back quite a bit because it's kind of shaded off because of like the radioactive wasteland that he's roaming about. But to survive, he's doubled his size to survive. He pretty much can thri he thrives in it and of course this is one of the very few Pokemon that are still, still alive in this wasteland that produce electricity. And you could say that because he's bigger, he produces a lot more electricity than other creatures on this wasteland. So what I also decided to do was I made him look a bit more darker because obviously get that, get that kind of look of like he's he's been he looks a bit dirty because of the wasteland. What I also did as well is I decided, you know what? Let's make the eyes green as well. Now, he can still see at these eyes, but I thought the green kind of emphasized a little bit of, well, he's not completely unscathed. Now, this one, you could approach, you could own it, and surprisingly, it may look terrifying, but it's actually a lot friendlier and safer to keep than our last Pokemon, by far. But, like I said, he's not completely unscathed, so he's a little bit radioactive, but let's be honest, everything's radioactive in this wasteland. So, Gigantron's bigger, much more powerful, a little bit scarier, but let's be honest, I would happily have this Pokemon. <laughs> I mean, if it's going to help me, then yeah, but let's be honest, it might try and attack people because it can. And yeah, I think most things would run away. And I can imagine that its electrical webs would be much, much scarier to run into as well. To catch its prey, you know. But I had a lot of fun doing this one. I think this one looks... I know, I got to play about with a little bit more and yeah, I think this was, turned out really very cool and I really, actually really like this. So I added a little bit of a glow, a little green glow, obviously a little bit of green dots everywhere to kind of show that he's completely un- oh, I'll see. But anyway, that's enough of me talking, here is Gigantion Radioactive. Well guys, that is us. We have done two Pokemon and we've made them both radioactive. And this was, I'm going to say, this was actually fun. No, seriously, I fairly, fairly enjoyed doing this. So pretty much as soon as I kind of came up with the idea, um, I really wanted to do it. And then I've done it. It has been quite enjoyable. Definitely quite enjoyable. And heck, what do you guys think of these two designs? Are they cool? Are they a bit weird? Or would you like me to see do other Pokemon maybe in the future? Maybe there's one you would like me to do to give it a bit more radioactiveness. Like make it, you know, apocalyptic for that kind of look. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm Goodfly, this is Foolish, we hope you've enjoyed the video, and like I said, if you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit the sub button and the bell, and that's pretty much it, that's all you need to do, and heck, anyway guys, thank you so much, we'll see you later, bye!